and stop pushing me and stop cooning with me and stop pushing me. Ah! Right, guys, we are back for part three. Oh, that took a lot out of me. That took a lot out of me, guys. Right, check this out. So, we're back for part three. So, we were getting into the story of a mixed race child has a black father this time. But let's assume that they are brought into this world. They don't really know much about their black father. They're with their, their let's assume, we can even say Chinese parents, whatever parents. But like I said, it's most common among, say, Caucasian people. So assume that you're raised in a Caucasian environment. Okay, you don't know who your dad is. Maybe you have um, white um, siblings, white sisters, brothers, you're raised in that home. Um, but when you look in the mirror, your skin seems to be darker. You don't really know. Because um, what we're doing is we're going with the extreme, guys. So let's assume that when you walk outside your door, there isn't that many black people. There's one here, one there. And when you go into school, it seems from an outsider's perspective, from a view, from a very, um, from a, you know, from a big distance from a field view that these young black kids in the school seem to be causing trouble all the time. You know, they seem to be the kind of the, um, the reckless ones and, you know, the ones that are always causing trouble and um, when they're kind of um, rebelling or fighting, acting up, it seems like, you know, they're just a bit troublemakers. So you're looking at your skin and you're thinking, damn, am I like, am I from these guys? Like, why can't I be more like my, my white parents at home, my, my white family at home. Um, sometimes in school they may even be throwing little digs in, you know, um, um, I bet your dad's an N and um, 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 you smell and all of this kind of stuff. Um, because you might be in a, say, a white school where it's more dumb, you know, it's, um, there's more white children there than what there are of other races, you know. It's, so um, you're getting little racist jokes being thrown at you. Um, all these things psychologically have an impact on you they have an impact you start to believe that um, maybe all black men just sleep around and you know they they you know um, they're not there for their kids you start to believe that um, black people are the violent ones they're always causing trouble um, you may, your dad may even take you on a work experience too is your stepfather may take you into work experience in his job and as you're going up the going through the building you're not seeing many black people on the floor of the workplace environment you're seeing them maybe in minuscule jobs you're not seeing them like with the seeing them progressing as high as or uh, as high as you, you see the, the other people in the office, the other uh, um, ethnic minorities, or um, whatever word you want to use to describe. It could be Caucasian, could be. The fact is that when your dad takes you through, your stepfather takes you on a work experience day through the building, through the offices, floors, and things like that, um, when you're seeing black people there, you're not seeing them in, in roles like in high paid jobs like you're seeing the the caucasian people there so overall you start to get this kind of um uh this kind of picture in your head that you know i don't really want to be black to be honest with you it seems like it seems like a harder life it just seems harder so we're understanding that from the mother's point of view from the mother's point of view, 
um, the black mother that's we really described in the previous video um, and then you have the the black father the influences aren't positive ones um, what sprung to mind when I done this video was the was the rock the rock I remember um, and again I said this this is very important because I said this in my slander video I said be careful what you read on the internet really you want to get it face to face like when I mentioned the Chris Brown thing that's in his videos I can show you those videos where he's made those comments with the rock he's not personally made these comments himself but what happened is one of his work colleagues Ahmed Johnson um, in a I don't know what I think it was a podcast don't quote me on it don't quote me on it guys but he claimed that he was in the locker room one time and I think the rock came back there or um, or he came into the locker room and the Triple H and the rest of his because um, Triple H was in a the group then Shawn Michaels a few others came back and they were quite racist uh, openly racist as well and they saw the rock and they were saying something about um, his dad being in N or something like that and um, they, or they said some sort of racial joke to him. I mean, you can check this online yourself. And he turned around and he said, um, my dad isn't black. My mom actually had an affair with a, uh, a white guy. But my dad isn't black. So, um, and the first time I, I read this and I heard about it, I was actually quite upset. You know, again, A, I don't even know it's true. Now I look back at it now, I don't even know it's true. Ahmed could have been saying it because he was jealous of the rock. Um, again, that would be again going back to my previous video. That's the that's the kind of uh, divide and conquer. Remember I was saying to you, um, a you could have been saying because you're jealous of the rock. Um, what was I going to say? A a because of jealousy, um, and B you just don't know. I never heard it from directly from Ahmed Johnson. I never heard it directly from him. Um, but yeah, at the time it, it got me angry and I was thinking, you know, the rocks this and the rocks that. Now I don't know. I don't know. But what I can say is that B, or should I say C, is understandable as to why the rock may, be, may have felt that way. It makes perfect sense. Because if we go back to the scenario that I was first describing of the heavily influences of when you're in an environment like that, you're in the WWE, for example, and all of the top guys are are um, of a different color. Because you could even went to China, you know, because it's not about all oh, focusing it all on white people or whatever. It's really, to be honest with you, it's half of black people all over the world. That's, that's the God's honest truth, even among our own people. There's in certain countries where they would rather hire a Caucasian or Chinese or whatever than hire a black person, and they're black themselves. So, you know, um, so it's understandable how The Rock, maybe at that time there, um, was trying to get into the, you know, get into the proper circles or the more where the money was at, basically. Basically a sellout, to be honest with you, that's how it sounds to me. But the, the wrestling industry, look, it goes without saying, New Day, you have to sell yourself out anyway. Okay, that's all I'm going to say is New Day. I won't say anything more than that. You have to sell yourself out anyway. Bobby Lashley, you know, Bobby Lashley doing some sort of a pose, walks into the WWE, and all of a sudden, he says, you know, I've got a new pose for you guys. And then all of a sudden, he bends over, and he shows the, the camera, he shows the audience, is his behind and people said wait a minute here when would you get Brock Lesnar walking into the ring because that's that's who's the equivalent to Brock Lesnar the baddest wrestler on the planet they say Bobby Lashley is the black version when would you get Brock Lesnar walking in bending over and showing the crowd his ass and saying that's his favorite pose what does that mean what does that mean to black people that are aspiring to be him what does that mean what does that mean, Lashley? You know, so, but um, the Rock, um, let's face it, in order to be a wrestler, you got to sell out anyway. Wanted to get in with the top people, and um, I do, hundred percent, believe that he had a distaste for black people, maybe even for his dad. I don't know why. And again, I'm, I don't want to. I'm not saying this in a negative way. I'm saying it in a way where I'm understanding him, not putting him down. I'm understanding it. That's the point I'm making. I'm not here putting down the rock or anything like that. I'm understanding it, okay? 
maybe his dad wasn't there, whatever. Um, he's raised around Samoan people. Um, you know, they you know, it's a different kind of um, environment, different pride, beliefs, morals, and all those kind of things. Um, and yeah, he, maybe he was kind of, you know, he was like, no, my dad is is white. My dad is white. My dad isn't black. Um, I don't want to be treated as I'm beneath you. I don't want to be the butt of your racist jokes. I just don't want it. I just, I know I should stand up for who I am and what I believe in, but I just want an easy life and I want money. I, I want money. I want to be someone, you know, so it makes sense as to why the Rock, Dwayne The Rock Johnson done it. If he did do it, supposedly. So check these things out yourself. So it's understandable to me sometimes when I walk into these supermarkets or walking around environments. I remember walking into a store trying to take something back that I bought and there was a mixed race guy there and I was trying to explain to him something that most black people would know and he didn't. And it was kind of confusing to me as to why, how he couldn't understand or how he couldn't relate to me. But what I'm here to tell him, you know, let's assume he was watching it, is that you're black, man. You're not... Please understand that you're black. You're black, okay? Um, stop cooning. You're black. Regardless of whether you've been raised around white people, Asians, Indians, whatever. If you've got half a black in you, you're black. Okay? Black has nothing to do with slang, and that's the biggest problem among our black community, is the whole slang thing. People seem to think that because you're not talking 100% black, you don't have the lingo, you don't have the swagger, that you're somehow a coon or a sellout. And I've explained this to people, again, my personal opinion, many a times of what a sellout is. Go to my sellout videos or go to cold facts video. A sellout has nothing to do with how you walk, how you talk. Nothing to do with it. That's not nothing to do with being a sellout. Um, I will go into my next video which will be on education. I wanted to call it um, education out that's what I was going to call the next video and then I'll explain that a little bit more um, has nothing to do and I think that's the biggest problem of our race okay and they need to question where that has come from as well because it has nothing to do with you um, you having uh, swagger and all of that I, I love the fact that black people got swagger and we got hip and I love all of that I think that's beautiful but don't be hating on people if they may not have that because that's not what black is. Black spirituality is is a strength that that is more than physical. Black blackness is a spiritual thing. It's not physical. Even if I went into a room and I didn't move, I was more statuesque. It's still spiritual. But there's too many in our own race that want to kind of try to tell you because they've watched a couple of um, gangster movies on TV, what black is. Because the latest um, hip hop video or Jamaican video, blah, blah, blah. Um, black is more than just having swagger. Okay? You are black. But there's many people, so it's not so much that you're the sellout, it's, um, this is what this video is about. It's about me apologizing, is that we've got too many sellouts within our own race. And they're trying to dictate that you should be this way, you should be that way. So the point I'm making is this. If you're in an environment where people um, are trying to be racist towards you because the colour of your skin, <clears throat> then turn around and say to those people, unlike the Rock, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, supposedly, um, say to them, yes, I am black and I'm proud of being black. Okay? and be the best version of a black person that you can be. You are the beacon, you are the light. So you're turning around, you're, you're turning around, you're telling those people, yes, I am black, 
and you're showing them what you want to represent as black you're showing them what you represent as black the best of black and it has nothing to do with being a snob or a coon or a sellout it has something to do with conducting yourself in the right way when you use the term black king a black king wouldn't be a racist a black king is a, is a man sitting down on his throne with his head held high and is wise is not running out there preaching hatred and killing each other and killing someone because of their skin and all of this kind of stuff it's a wise man sitting down on his throne making wise decision that is black spirituality there are even certain black people that are cooning okay like for example i used to know a friend i won't even go into his race i'll just say he was black and he believed he said to me personally listen Luke, i would have made it when i'm driving around in a nice sports car and beside me is my white princess this is what he told me and he said i would have made it when i take take that white princess through my door and my mother can see that i'm um, that i have a white female white girlfriend then I will. Then my mum will praise me and get down and um, I'm over exaggerating here. Get down and kiss my feet and you know. But that's what he said. Like the sports car, her on the passenger side, her on the passenger side, and when he can bring them home to his mum, his mum will say, "Son, you have made it." That that's that's. He was the ultimate coon. Okay. Um, yes, us as black people are sometimes coming out with some sort of madness and we're supporting madness as well i understand that and this is what i was trying to say to you about the whole when they're trying to say to you you're not black enough you know who's telling you you're not black enough who because i've taught have had people tell me i'm not black enough um not merely black men it's either been black women um that don't know what black blackness is um and i'm not going to put down my own black women i'm just going to say they need to get their head straight okay and it's been maybe other races, other races of women that told me I wasn't black enough. But, um, you know, in our culture, for example, the, even the people that they look up to, they see as role models, like their their singers, um, their actors, and their rap stars and things like that. In order to be a rapper, you have to be um, very articulate. Most rap stars, well not all of them, but some of them have been to university. That's, the, that's how they're able to, to rap so well, articulate themselves, come up with a, a word that rhymes. If I was to, to do a rap for you now, because of my limited vocabulary, I'm going to sound like a complete donut, basically. So a lot of these people that they're looking up to, even though they talk slang, behind the scenes are extremely articulate. But black people, for some reason, aren't putting one to one together. So blackness is a spiritual thing. Okay. Um, just like that African guy talking about his white girlfriend in the passenger car and all of that. All of that, that to me is selling out. That to me is cooning. Okay. Putting your own race down and you don't even know them. Um, prejudice, racist towards your own race is cooning. Regardless of what environment you've been raised in it's cooning stop with the cooning okay have respect for everyone yes there are some black people that are embarrassed in our race making us look like complete dickheads yes there is and i've even bumped into them many times myself okay they've hated on me based upon the way i've talked and things like that just because they're not educated or whatever black spirituality has nothing to do with the way you talk or the way you you walk or swag or anything like that black spirituality is more than that it's the way you conduct yourself it's more or less leadership okay but we're so the Woody Lynch theory is still hanging over our heads literally and we're not really using our brains yeah it's never what you say it's always what you do okay so in the wise world of MJ let me have to do this again stop coming and I'm out. Peace.